Welcome back to another IM users video. We're going to talk today about how to do NPT threads. Now the reason an NPT thread is a little bit more challenging than a standard thread is the fact that it doesn't keep a con consistent pitch across the entire length of it. So there's a couple different tools that we're going to use to get that to work and to be able to pick up things like your E0, E1, E2 dimensions for effective pitch using your L1 and L2 lines. We're going to show you how to get the angle as well as create a thread searching tool so that as this thread rotates and the threads move left or right as far as the IM is concerned, it'll always be able to attach to it. So first things first, we need a center line. And in this case, I have a very strong center line to work off of right back here. If you don't have this, you can always use the center line tool found under your elements to be able to grab just the thread portion. But if you do have something stronger, I highly recommend you use it bisecting line to drive the center line in place and now let's get started on our thread. First thing I want to do is under my elements line tool let's drop in an actual L0 or the very end of our part. Now we want to make it so that as with this thread rotates the machine is always going to find the threads. It's always going to search for the beginning threads and find the exact location to attach to. So what we're going to do is grab a point on a line and drag so that you drag through the beginning of your very first real thread. Don't do it through any of these smaller half threads. You want to do it through the first real thread that you have. Come down to the very bottom to your alignments. Select the finger, click on the bisecting line. So now that's going to search along this line for that first thread. Hit apply and there we go. Next, virtual figures, perpendicular line, grab your center line, make a perpendicular line going through that point. For the sake of neatness, I'm going to shrink this down. We only need it to be available as a reference for later on. Okay, let's drop in our theoretical pitch. Theoretical pitch is where we grab the actual verticals or the line, sloped lines of our thread combine the theoretical sharp with the theoretical valley and find the midpoint. So I'm going to go under my elements line tool, draw in my first line. Now I need to make it so that this is going to be referenced to that beginning tooth. So come down to your references and now select that vertical line. Now instead of it being parallel, we're going to put in an arbitrary value. So this is going to actually be negative 30 degrees. And the reason we want it to be negative 30 is here's our vertical line. We're going to be coming backward or to the right by 30 degrees for it to attach here. And it's a standard for all NPT threads. The next is the distance. You're going to set a distance from the target, which is that X, of a certain amount. And this portion is going to be, unfortunately, a little bit of hunting and pecking. Hit apply. OK, it's attached to the right hand side of my thread. So what I want to do is actually hit a negative sign. By putting the negative in, it'll now lock on to the very beginning. Now we make this box large enough that even if it were off by a tiny bit, it won't really interfere with the total thread. So there we go. We're actually in the right location and we're good to go. Hit next, drop in your next line. It will retain most of that information, but in this case we want it to be a positive 30. Now with this thread, Eat the thread pitch between each of the blacks and each of the white centers is 0.03. So each time we add a new one in, I'm going to add another 0.03 to it. Great. Let's drop in another. We're going back to negative this time. So as you can see, each time we're going, I'm just switching whether or not it's going to be a positive or negative, and I'm adding in another 0.03 to my distance. Hit apply each time as you go. It'll help you actually make sure that you haven't missed anything or skipped a decimal place or something like that. Now the more of these you can get, the better. You need at least a minimum of three. So if you have anything less than three actual threads, it's going to be very difficult to use on the IM. It is possible, but challenging. So now let's find those theoretical valleys and sharps. Go to your intersection tool and begin to click on your peaks and your valley lines. There we go. Now we want the center of those. 
So click the tops and bottoms using your virtual figure midpoint tool. Next up, grab your OLS line and select those that pitch. Perfect. We're going to copy everything. Just click and drag across. If you'd like to bring your OLS line as well, just hold control and click on that OLS line. You'll see it change to a different color green. From here you can go to Edit, Copy, Edit, Paste, and it'll drop another set in place. Drag it to the other side. Now the beauty of this search is I can drop this all the way over here. When I hit Measure, it's going to shift right over to where it needs to be to lock on. That's because it saved all that distance information that I referenced earlier. So look at that. Our thread finding tool is actually already working. Now we have our two pitch lines. If you need to measure the angle of that, go to your angle tool, click both lines, place where you need your angle to be. Angle is 3.566 plus or minus 0.5. Great. Now let's do our E0, E1, and E2, our effective pitch dimensions. First thing we're going to do is in our virtual figures, go to parallel. So if this is L0, we need to drop in our L1 line. So click this, and then click anywhere else. L1 is at 2278. Don't forget your negative sign as we're going to be working to the left on this part. If you were doing everything to the right, you wouldn't need your negative sign. For the sake of neatness, I'm going to shrink this down, make it only a half inch so it doesn't take up the whole screen, and then hit Next. Again, click on my L0. Click somewhere close to where I want the L2. L2 should be 4018. Great. Now, let's put in our intersections between the L0 and the pitch line. L1 and our pitch line and L2. Under your basics, point to point, click the points, and place. E0 is 47739, plus or minus 0.004. point to point for your L1, that E1 dimension is 0.49163 plus or minus 0 0.004. Finally E2 is 0 0.50250, again plus or minus 0 0.004. Great. Now, last, let's add in our majors and minors. Under your elements, go to max point rectangle, and you want to draw a few boxes here. But let's start with one. The way your max point tool works is it scans whatever direction the arrow is for whatever the furthest forward black to white transition occurs. On the scanning direction, you can change whether you want that to be going up or going down. You also want to make sure you reference it to the center of the part. This helps it because while I'm pretty good at doing these, sometimes I may end up drawing something like this where it'll attach to the edge of a tooth as opposed to the top of the tooth. By referencing it, it doesn't really matter how I draw my lines. Drawing a couple, you want to make sure that they're all going to be actually overlapping each other. This means that regardless where the teeth end up, you'll always be able to grab one of those threads. We can also do the minors at this point, and just change the direction of the arrows. Again, make sure they overlap, even if it's only slightly. Great. If we want to copy these, just hold control and click each of the ones that you're interested in holding in copying. Again, edit, copy, edit, 
paste, drag these right over to the other side. We don't need to adjust any of these settings. Everything will copy from the originals. Hit measure and it'll drop our lines in place, our points in place. Go to your virtual figures, OLS line. Now click each of your peaks and click each of your valleys. The more peaks and valleys you add in, the more accurate you'll be, but you only absolutely need two in order to make the program work. Again, under your intersections, you can now get the dimensions for your maximums and the dimensions for your minimums at your L0, L1, L2 dimensions. Point to point. E0 minimum, so on and so forth. So hopefully that helped you guys out. Please feel free to drop any comments that you might have onto the forums and we will get back to you as soon as we can.